Good morning. I want to welcome everybody to home, Come Home Ministries. Um, we've been studying about spirituality. Um, big subject. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you give us to study your word. Um, we know we are being taught by the Holy Spirit. Um, it's not what I say, it's what God says. Uh, Lord, let me decrease and you increase. And use me today to get the word out to your people. And we'd be ever graceful to give you thanks and praise. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 We've been looking at our main text is Proverbs 20. 27. Um, what, what we've been trying to do here, what we, because what I'm learning that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And a, a lot of times when you first hear something from the Word of God, it don't register. So you have to go back and repeat it. It's just like um, if if you're trying to train your physical body, you have to keep exercising. You can't just start off exercising, lifting weights and running and doing all that at one time. You have to, you know, uh, gradually ease up to it. And it's the same way in training your mind. If you're studying to be in a profession, then you just can't jump all the way to the top whatever your profession is, you have to gradually um, be trained on, you know, the elementary things of that profession. Yeah, the basics. You have to, you know, go to grade school, middle school, high school, you know, whatever, you know, then college. It's the same way when uh, what we're doing here is training our spirit, developing our spirit. That's what the spirituality is about. It's the development and training of your human spirit. That's why I said Proverbs 20:27 is it says, the spirit of a man is a lamp of the Lord. Now you notice it said the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. Searching all the inner depths of his heart. And the reason why a lot of people are not doing as well as they could do because they don't know that they are a spirit. They see their body in a mirror, a reflection of a mirror. They, you know, they, you know, they, they see, hear, taste touch and smell, you know, they got their five physical senses and they know they got a mind because they mind the things what they want to mind. You know, if you mind the things of the world, that's what you're going to, you know, you want to be develop world. your mind in. But very few people know they have a spirit. Now, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 says, Oh, is that Proverbs? We were. We're moving forward. We didn't read Proverbs. I did read yes, it. Did. No, we didn't. But well, not in this, not our verse. Not out of Amplified. What verse did we read Proverbs? Uh, 20, 27. You want to read it? Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. Want to, I want to point out Proverbs 18, 10. Okay, what's going on in 18, 10? The Lord. Does it have to do with what we're talking about here? Okay, let's take a look at that. 1810. You want to read it? You say the lot, but is this funny? Go ahead. No, Mom can read it. 1810. Well, really, it's it's like I don't know. It's not like our own time. I feel like I feel like one through through ten is a good thing to read. Okay, read one through ten. I mean, all the word of God is true, and all the word of God is good. And we want to be led by the Spirit here. 18, uh, 1 through 10 reads, He who willingly separates himself from God and man, sees his own desire, 
he quarrels against all sound wisdom. A closed-minded fool <laughs> does not delight in understanding, but only in revealing his personal opinions unwittingly, displaying his self-indulgence and his stupidity. When the wicked man comes to the death of evil, contempt of all that is pure and good also comes. And with the inner baseness, this honor comes out outer shame, scorn. Mm -hmm. The words of man's mouth are like deep waters, copious and difficult to phantom. The fountain of Mature godly wisdom is like a bubbling stream, sparkling, fresh, pure, and life-giving. To show respect to the wicked person is not good, nor to push aside and deprive the righteousness of justice. A fool's lips bring contention and strife, and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a whisperer, a gossip, are like the dainty morsels to be greedily eaten. They go down into the innermost chamber of the body to be remembered and missed upon. And he who is curless in his work as a brother to him who destroys. The name of the Lord is strong, is a strong tower. The righteous, huh? I was repeating the righteous runs to it. Yeah, the righteous runs to it and is safe and set on high, far above evil. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you're right. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to take a small intermission here. Um, okay. Okay, after that small intervention, um, a lot of times things happen and you have to stop what you're doing and what you have to do, you, you can't do two things at one time. You have to put stop one thing and do what the priority is. And the way you know what the priority is, is by the Word of God. Amen. So we looked at that Proverbs 18th chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one verse in there that we, uh, verse 14, it says, The spirit of a man will, sus will sustain him in sickness. Right. But who can yeah. bear a broken spirit? Now, does that read the same way out of Amplified? Yeah, it does. The spirit of a man sustains him in sickness, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? Right. Now, getting back to, you know, we have been talking about how to, you know, locate in the spirit of man, and that we already went over two verses in Proverbs about the spirit of man. But like I was saying, a lot of people don't know that they have a spirit. They, they know they have a soul. They even made songs on that, um, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Well, what they're actually saying, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his mind? <laughs> because that's what happens to a lot of people. They actually lose their mind and they have... Uh, a couple of words for that, don't they? Uh, that when somebody loses their mind, uh, am or what is that? What do they call it? What, oh, let me see. What's your dad have? Oh, oh dementia. 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 That's what they call it. But actually, they have lost their mind. And see, if you're in the body of Christ, greater is He that is in you. This is 1 John 4, 4. Look, look at that verse. And if you had given another verse. I'm, I'm, I'm That's the first Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. It's called this 1 Thessalonians 5, 
23. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the Bible puts the spirit first, and then the soul, and then the body. But most of the time when people are talking, they say body, soul, and spirit, because they're more body-driven than spirit-driven. They have developed their, their body and mind over the spirit. And this, this you know... The, over what they can see. Right. That's what they go by. And like I was saying, uh, 1 John 4, 4 is one of my favorite verses uh, because, you know, uh, if you're in Christ, Here's what it says, 1 John 4, 4. It says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So, God is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. And I read it out of him. Yeah, sure. Little children, believers, dear ones, you are of God, and you belong to him, and have already overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist, because he who is in you is greater than he, Satan, who is in the world of sinful mankind. Now, we broke this down um, on how to develop or train your human spirit. Uh, once you realize you are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in this body, you have to train the spirit. And we talked about how uh, billions of dollars have been put into the development of the human body, your physical aspect, you know, uh, your health and all of that, and how billions of dollars have been put into your educational system. Uh, the price of colleges is outrageous now. But I don't see nowhere where billions or maybe even a hundred or a million dollars have been put into the development of the spirit. And this is why I've been led to teach and train people on the development of the spirit. Because we have touched so many subjects, like I said, and uh, what happens when you take a theme out of the Bible and you try to, if you stick to that theme, you feel like you can't cross over to another theme. But what I'm learning with the study with spirituality, you can take them uh, rabbit trails or whatever they call them. Um, you, can, you can go off and give a testimony on how good God has been to you. Just like this verse says, greater is he that is in you. God is in you. You are in the body of Christ. So the wicked one can't do nothing to you. And a lot of people, um, you know, we got Halloween coming up, so there is a lot of, you know, haunted shows on TV and all of that, and, you know, haunted house and all of that. But the truth to be told, Satan has no power. First John chapter. He has no power. First John four four. And and once you realize that that Satan has no power, see a lot of people don't believe, don't know that that Satan has no power over them. Right? That's right. And we know that we're not in, even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. That's right. Right? Right. Now we looked at uh, another verse here, it was uh, Romans the 8th chapter, 14 and 16. Romans 8. 14 and 16. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And then verse 16 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit itself bears witness, bears witness with our spirit that we are 
a child of God. And we also looked at, now it don't hurt to go back over these verses, uh, because um, you got to keep your mind sharp. And the way we told, we uh, started this, there's four things that we sh do to develop or to train the human spirit. We meditate in the Word. We practice the Word of God, be doers of the Word, and we give the Word first place in our life. That means when something happens, we don't call Aunt Georgia or Uncle Bob. Mm -hmm. We look in the Word to see what it says about the situation. And then after that, we listen to that inward voice. That inward yeah. voice, witness. witness. A lot of people say it's the intuition, or uh, but it's actually the conscience of the man. Uh, that inward voice, the spirit, is the conscience of man. Uh, just like the flesh, the voice of the flesh is feelings. You, you know, you hear people say, well, I don't feel good. I don't feel this. I don't I feel, feel like they love me. That, that's the voice of the flesh. You know, and um, the voice of the mind is reasoning. You know, you ever got, you know, told somebody something, you tell them the truth, and they want to reason their way out of right. it, why they are doing yeah. what they are doing, right. and, and trying to you know, you. trying to convince us why they are doing what they are doing. Well, That's the voice of the mind. The but, right. You know, just like you said in Proverbs uh, 20, 27, it says the spirit, the conscious, like mm -hmm. you said, of man. It's the lamp of the Lord. We're right. conscious. Hmm. We're conscious. That's the, our spirit. Right, your conscience. Our See, conscience. Wait, 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 so where's the spirit at? Is it located in our heart or our mind? The spirit is the innermost part of you. Your spiritual man, what, what, what I have found out through true life experiences that uh, my body what I look like here on earth is a reflection of my spirit. Right. So now our mind is wicked, right? Well, your mind needs to be renewed Daily. with the Daily. Word of God. Mm -hmm. And the reason I can say that, because um, when I was younger, before we even got married, um, I was running around in Newark, Ohio, and I had this 71 Dodge Charger that Actually, you shouldn't have been driving it in the winter, but I was going to drive it anyway. And I was headed to Columbus, and I was uh, in an accident. And I called on the name of the Lord, and he saved me from actually getting injured real bad. Uh, the car was totaled out. Um, and they, you know, said I should go to the hospital and get, you know, checked out. So I went to the hospital and got checked out. and. That night, uh, as I was, you know, laying there with, you know, because they, they put IVs on you and all this stuff, you know, the heart monitors and, you know, all that kind of stuff that they put on you. And I had to use the bathroom. So I got up, headed toward the bathroom and looked back and I actually was still on the bed. I screamed. The reason I screamed because I didn't realize that I was really a spiritual being. I thought what I saw in the flesh, that was me. Okay. I thought I was just soul and body. Mm -hmm. But that gave me an eye opener that I was actually more than what I was could see. So that spiritual part of me jumped right back in my body when I screamed. And the reason I know I screamed, even though I had been in the church, raised up in the church many years, and, um, you know, my grandfather was a minister, his grand, you know, um, my uh, grandmother's father was a minister, and we was raised up in the church, uh, I thought I was saved. But going to church and joining a church don't mean that you're saved. 
What saves you is when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Then you're saved. It's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And I actually, God, actually, you know, woke me up that day. And that's when I pulled myself together and, um, you know, started living a different life. I made that adjustment in myself. And then once I, we got married and we went, you know, joined the church, that's when I actually hit me that I wasn't saved. Because I used to go to church and say, why is the minister talking about us? But it actually wasn't the minister talking about us. It was our own heart condemning us. Because we wasn't doing everything that we should have been doing. Even though we was in the church. So that's what happens to a lot of people. When they go to church, they think that the minister is talking about them. But it's actually their own heart condemning them. And there's scripture for that. It's a conviction. It's, you get convicted. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. He convicts the world of sin. Right. We saw that in, in the scripture, right? In John, right. John the 16th chapter. Right. Um, uh, we saw that, that he convicts the world of sin. of sin. You know? Right, that's what the Holy Spirit, uh, that's his ministry. That's in uh, John 16, 9 of sin. That's what he does. The Holy Spirit convicts you of sin. It, this is sin, plural. Because they do not believe in me. Right. When you do not believe that Jesus yes, is and, Lord, and my message. if you don't believe the message, you get convicted. So once I was actually born again, spiritually, my spirit came alive. That's what happens when you're born again. Your spirit comes alive. And we saw that in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, right? Yes. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So when somebody says um, to me, well, you used to do that, you've done that, you, you know, you have done that, you've done that. That was the old person. That was the dead Robert. I am the new Robert now. So everything that happened before I was born again has, has been done away with. That's right. And this is one reason why I'm studying the Word of God because even though my outer man is perishing or deteriorating every day, my inner man is being renewed day by day. And we saw that actually in, you remember when we saw that? That was in Corinthians 2, wasn't it? I believe so. We was at 1 Corinthians 16 before. Is that where that was? I, I don't See, know. the reason I go over these verses because a lot of times these verses should just pop in your head too. And this is what, what I'm talking about, meditating on the Word of God. What happens, these verses actually pop in your head. But we know it's in there. So. It was 1622, first verse. Was it? Is that where it was? Yeah, it's probably, yes, I got it. Uh, it has to, if anyone does not love the Lord, does not obey and respect and believe in Jesus Christ and his message, mm -hmm. he is to be a curse. Well, yeah, your mother read that last week. Mm -hmm. um, but most of this stuff, I believe, is in Second Corinthians that we have been looking at. Actually, it was in 2 Corinthians 4. You remember that? 2 Corinthians 4, 16? 
read 416. Now read 416, 17, and 18. Because once you know that this is um, that you've been born again and you know you're a new creation, here's what happens. 416. Here's what Paul 17. told the Corinthians. Therefore, we do not become discouraged, spiritualists, disappointed, or afraid. Though our outer self is progressively wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. For our momentary light distress, this passing trouble, is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, a fullness beyond all measure, surprising all comparisons, a transcendent splendor, and an endless blessedness. So we look not at the things which are seen, but at things which are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporal, just brief, and fleeting. But the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. See, there is a spiritual world, and in that spiritual world, that's where God is. God is a spirit. The everlasting and imperishable. And He made man in His image. So we're in the same class of God. As God is the spirit, we are a spirit. And our physical man is a reflection of our spiritual man. Now, 2 Peter, 1 Peter puts it another way when he talks about, you know, how wives should, you know, um, adorn themselves. It says, and this is 2 Peter 3, 3, he says, uh, he's talking about women and wives here. He said, do not let your adornment be merely outward. Arranging of hair, wearing a gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden man, or the hidden person of the heart. Second Peter, what? Y'all going too fast. First Peter 3.3. 1 Peter 3.3. Three. Three. Uh, it says, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart, which is incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. So it ought to amplify how does verses 3 and 4 read out of that. See, what we, we want to do here, which we have been doing for the last couple of weeks, is, is, is letting you locate your spirit. And these are the verses that you should be meditating on. That once you are, you are totally convinced that you are a spirit. The real you is a spirit. And you possess a soul, which is your mind, emotions, and all of that. And you live in this body. You start looking at things altogether different. Because Jesus said that the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And see, unless you've been born again, your spirit has been created new. I'm not talking about the new, like if you go out there and get a new Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Because you can look at the Cadillacs from 2014 to 2017 and you can't you really tell no difference in them. So what he's talking about here in the Greek, this new is something totally has never existed before. I mean, that's new. <laughs> that's new. So you're, that spirit... When you're born again, that spiritual person has never existed before. That's a new person. So, and if it's never existed before inside you, you have to know that you have to train that spirit. Because you have been living, um, driven by the lust of the flesh and all that. But so, like I, like I said, that spirit is, is unseen. Right, Everybody so, can see it. right, read this three verses of... Uh, 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4. Because, you know, a lot of people take this verse out of context. Um, 1 Peter, the third chapter, the third verse. 
the third verse, read verses 3 and 4, how to amplify it. Your adornment must not be merely external with interweaving. Interweaving. And no, I'm not interweaving. That's why I said I first no. interweaving. Mm -hmm. But that was sure was right. So your adornment must not be merely external with interweaving and elaborate knotting of the hair and wearing gold jewelry or being superficially preoccupied with dressing and expensive clothes. But let it be the inner beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality and unfailing charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, one that is calm and self control not over anxious, anxious, but sincere and spiritually mature, which is very precious in the sight of God. So, Paul calls it the inner man. Peter calls it the hidden man. That's the spirit part of you. That's that spirit part of you people can't see. Mm -hmm. And I guess back in the Bible they had, uh, they must have been weaving here. What well, yeah, they, well, they, yeah, yeah, they, they had, they were doing weaving, all that. Weaving, uh, but a, a lot of people like take this verse out of context mm -hmm. and they say that women shouldn't. Uh, be, uh, um, you know, weaving their hair and wearing gold and putting on, you know, fine apparel, apparel and all that. that. But that is not what it's talking about. Right. God wants women to look nice. This is a contrast right. between verse 3 and 4. He says, don't get caught up in all That's that. That's right. But he wants you to, you're supposed to present yourself nice. unto God. Yeah. But he's looking at the inner I'm part saying this is why we have to go to Romans, the 12th chapter, yeah. because you have to do something with your body, right. and you have to do something with your mind. God has already taken care of the sin issue, but you have to do something with your body, right. and you have to do something with your mind. You right. can't. You have to. You have to bring your body into submission. Amen. You know what I mean? You have to control your body. A lot of people don't control themselves. Or their mind. He says in the first verse, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So he's saying you have to do something with your body. And then he says in verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So if you don't renew your mind with the word of God, you could be doing something that you shouldn't be doing that is hindering you. And, and you could be, you know, I heard people cry and pray and cry and pray, and, you know, Lord, heal me, Lord, you know, do this. And, and again, in 2 Peter 224 says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the, the on the tree, that we having died to sin might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Okay, repeat that verse. Second Peter 2.24. So you have already been healed. Right. You just have to receive it. You have to take it. By faith. You believe that you're healed. And if you're going around confessing that every time of this year I get the flu, most likely you're going to get the flu because you're confessing it. <laughs> you know, so, you know, this is why it's so important, you know, to stay in the Word of God. And that's what I'm talking about, meditating on the Word of God. And James says you got to, that was second Peter. Second first Peter, excuse me. Oh, was first Peter two twenty four. I'm okay. sorry. First Peter two twenty four. What does that say I'd amplify? He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it, as on our altar of sacrifice, so that we might Died to sin, becoming immune from the penalty 
and the power of sin, and live for righteousness. For by his wounds you who believe have been healed. See, uh, you who believe have been healed. Jesus has given us a complete redemption. Amen. Hallelujah. A complete redemption. Uh, he not you only took healed. care of the sin sure. problem, he has, uh, act, you know, he's delivered us right. from spiritual death. That's right. And he's also, by his stripes, we have been healed. Have been healed. He has redeemed us from sickness. Those who believe. Right. And also, he has redeemed us from poverty. Amen. Ooh you know, it's a you know, and see, this is why you have to get in the Word of God yourself, Amen. because a lot of people don't, and then they go around listening to somebody, um, what they're saying, and a lot of times what people are saying is not the complete truth, because it says in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, Here's what Paul wrote to this Corinthian church, and we know in the Corinthian church they had all the manifestations of the Spirit working. So you can have the manifestations of the Spirit working in your life, but you can also uh, be ignorant to things. And Paul was saying, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that you, through his poverty, might become rich. So he has redeemed us from spiritual death, he has redeemed us from sickness, and he has redeemed us from poverty. And if you read Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that's what it talks about. Spiritual death, poverty, and also sickness. I'm talking about, this says in Duke Romney, we actually been delivered from disease that they ain't even came up with a name for yet. And see, this is why you have to really um, meditate on the Word of God, day and night. That's what it said in Joshua. Now this, this we have went over these verses, but it don't hurt to go over them again. I mean, I have ate a good, um, you know, breakfast, but I'm going to eat another good breakfast, you know? And Joshua, um, the first chapter, we that's our, uh, one of the verses we looked at. It says, uh, this is what he told Joshua. This is after Moses had passed away, and Joshua became the leader of the people. And, uh, you know, I noticed when um, Joshua became a leader of these people here, they didn't have a board that interviewed and elected somebody to be the pastor. They they accepted what God said. And here's what the here's what it said in the eighth verse. It said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You say you'll be successful. So we're, we wanted to kind of drill in on and, and, and let you know that you are a spiritual being so that you can locate your spirit. And we went over a, a few verses here that is letting you know that you got to meditate in the Word of God. And, and if you need to know something, uh, um, you got to ask God about it. I'm going to give you one more verse here because it don't help to know all these verses. And Because a lot of people say, I know all them verses. I can quote all them verses. I have memorized all them verses. But here's what the Word of God says in the book of James. You know, um, because where you are, I have been. And... Um, Here's what I found out in the book of James, the second chapter, no, the first chapter. This book of James was written to the church, and the reason I know that, because it tells you in the fifth chapter, it says, uh, if anyone, this is uh, James 5.14, it says, if anyone is sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Because a lot of people don't think the book of James is written to the church. Now here's what it says in James 1, 
22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Um, in, the, in the border of some Bibles it says in, uh, delusioning yourself. See, a lot of people is living in a delusion. They are deceiving their self because in order for the Word of God to work, you have to be a doer. And then the 21st, 23rd verse says, For if anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So when you're meditating on the Word of God and then you, you don't pay no attention to the, you're not you don't start doing the Word of God and, and you just walk away from the Word of God, you most likely going to forget what the Word of God has said to you. Right. Because you're not doing it. Not doing it. Yeah, you can quote it, but you're not doing it. Right. But in order to develop or train your human spirit, you got to be a doer of the Word of God. And I know that, you know, a lot of things, you know, since I've been in this study, the Lord has brought to my attention that I wasn't doing. You know, I, because a lot of times you have to be, you have to watch yourself. You can be led by a person instead of led by the Spirit. Because that 25th verse Go ahead. says a lot. It says, but he who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and faithfully abides by it, not being become a careless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. He will be blessed and favored by God in what he does in his life of obedience. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it says that we have to be uh, faithful. If anyone thinks himself to be religious, scrumptiously, scrupulously observant of the ritual of faith and does not control his tongue but to lose his own heart. This person's religion is worthless. So pure religion is what? It says in 27? To a pure and unblemished religion as it is expressed in the outward acts in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit and look after the fatherless and the widowers and their distress and to keep oneself uncontaminated by the secular world. So that's a mouthful for today. We're going to stop right there um, because we want to get into giving the word first place next week. If the Lord's willing, if he don't come back. That's what I mean, if he don't come back. Because we're going to be doers of the word of God. Amen. And we're going to meditate on the Word of God. And what we have learned out that uh, we have to, to also tell you in that, that same chapter in verse 19, it says, So then, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. There's a lot of people, you try to tell them something, they just want to run their mouth, talk all over top of you. And, and, and they can't, you know, the Bible says that you're supposed to be swift to hear. Because if you listen to people, then you can locate them and you'll know what to say. Because while you're locating them, the Holy Spirit is, might tell you not to say nothing. Right. And again, he might tell you to do something. Because they may need something. Because you're led by the Spirit. That's right. And Jane talks about all that. If somebody comes to you hungry and in need, you say, you know, bless them, send them on their way and don't right. do nothing That's for them. That, that, that ain't right. Or you tell them, oh, I know how you feel. And you really don't know right. how Right, you don't know how a person feels. You have no idea how somebody feels. The only way you know how they feel is the Holy Spirit brings it right. to your, your, your spirit. Right. Well, he makes Because you your spirit bears witness with the right. Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is leading you to do something, you do it. You do it. That's right. But if he's not leading you to do something, I don't care who it is, don't do it. Don't do it. And don't say it either. Amen. Okay, stop right here.
Praise God. Thank you, Lord, uh, for this opportunity. Can you close us in a prayer? Yes. Thank you, sister. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, we thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity again uh, to be here this day. Mm -hmm. uh, you watched over us all through the week. To be, and, and here we are again. Mm -hmm. Lord, we uh, just ask you to uh, bless those that are listening and hearing and that you um, uh, that they're receiving the word, Lord, that their hearts mm -hmm. are open. And because they, we want everyone to be filled um, with your holy word, Lord, right. as you fill us. Mm -hmm. And we just uh, thank you again for the opportunity uh, allowing us to be here. We um, ask you to continue. Forgive us for our sins. I know we have been forgiven, Lord, because uh, you're mm -hmm. just so good to us. But we still have to confess um, throughout the day, whatever we think thinking wrong or doing wrong, mm -hmm. we know that you are faithful to forgive us. Yes. And we just ask your Holy Spirit to continue to lead us and direct us uh, in your righteous path, Lord, so we can do the things you want us to do and say those things you want us to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you again, Father, and bless those that are listening. And continue to bless us so we can do your work that you would have us to do in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.